Welcome to DataBuild's audio visual instruction. Entering the job details. Go into jobs and debtors by clicking the jobs debtors icon in the main toolbar. We have already entered in a job for Mr. James Buckley and the debtor information has been entered and now we need to enter the job details. Click the details tab. Start by entering in the job address in the job details field. This is the address for the job and will be used for supplier purchase orders, progress claims and other documents that require the job address. Type in the town, drop down the menu for the state and the postcode can be searched for by clicking the binoculars. The next field is the cost centre bank field. Click the drop down menu arrow and select a cost centre bank. This will almost always be the construction bank unless the job is the company overheads accounting job. Enter the start date. You can drop down a calendar and click the date or you can simply type the date in the field as we are here in the completion date field. Select a pay strategy so when you send a progress claim to your client it will ask for payment as per the pay strategy set, in this case 7 days. The parent job and the parent database fields are used when you are copying jobs from another database. If you have used the copy quantities option to copy this job from another database, the fields will already have the relevant information displayed. However, you can manually enter the information if you wish. You don't have to fill these fields in. You can lock the budgets on the job so job costing reports will always reflect on the original budget. Prevent estimating stops any further changes to the estimating component. Prevent posting stops any financial information being processed on this job. You can also archive jobs and hide them from the job list but still retain all the job information. Click the drop down menu for the job group. The job group is user definable and used to group various jobs together maintaining a job status. To add or edit the job group list click the edit button to the right of the field and the job group table appears. Click the add icon to add another job group. These entries are numbered in ascending order. Type in the name. Exit when finished then drop down the menu to select an option. Do the same for the job type. The job type can help categorise jobs. You can also set these up to suit your own business environment. Select a supervisor. To add or edit the supervisor list, click the edit button to the right of the field and the supervisor table appears. As you can see there are some samples there which you can simply overtype if convenient or add a new supervisor. Insert their phone number in line 2 field. Repeat to add in all your supervisors if necessary. When you go back to the main screen you can select your supervisor from the drop down menu. Do the same for the estimator. This information can appear on the bottom of your purchase orders. The salesperson and retention on claims fields are beyond the scope of this training video. The GST option is selected by default. The grayed out quantities and orders boxes will be automatically checked when there are quantities and orders attached to the job. Suppress from job control is beyond the scope of this training video. There you have it.
job details. That's it for this lesson. Thanks for watching.